Welcome to a special edition of Business Mentorship Keeping It Real, where we are collaborating with the Enthuse Foundation, who supports female entrepreneurs through education, mentorship, and grant funding. Today, our guest is one of the finalists in the 2023 Pitch Competition. Hilary Kokalis is an award-winning marketing expert in the food and beverage industry, who is now the founder and chief go-getter for her own company. We're going to discuss her journey into entrepreneurship and why she's connecting with consumers, providing organic wine in the can. Congratulations, Hillary. I am absolutely thrilled to have you with us today. Um, I'm sure you and your team are very excited about being one of the finalists in the 2023 pitch competition. We are, we are, and I'm incredibly excited to be here too, to talk to you. Well, thank you. You know, why don't we start with your great idea? and why you decided to start your own business when having a successful senior leadership role in the industry? That's a good question. And, and those things kind of go hand in hand. So um, I, uh, I've worked, so my, my business, my great idea is wine in a can. Um, I've worked in the alcohol industry for a while. So I've worked for large brands, small brands, um, have been around the business for a while and um, you know, personally, I was working on the beer side of the business and uh, was just personally getting more into wine, tasting wines, learning more about wine. And um, but I also don't drink that much, um, which is kind of funny considering I've worked in alcohol for a while. I just don't, um, you know, and especially I work really hard. I'm an executive. I have two small kids as well. So like I, you know, if I'm at home having a glass of wine, I'm having a glass or maybe two at a time. Um, and I just sort of had this question in my head of like, why do I have to open a whole bottle? I usually waste it. If I just want a glass, there's no good way to have a single serving of good quality wine. Um, and when I went out in the market to find single serve wines, the good quality ones are, are hard to find. You know, typically the cans or the boxes are low quality, they're sugary. They're not well made. And so for someone like me who loves wine and loves learning about wine, how do I get a good quote bottle quality wine in a single serving? And um, because of my background in beer, I figured um, cans are popular for beer. Why aren't they popular for good quality wine? And Makes started to sense. connect the dots together <laughs> and started going on, on my own way. And then I think Beyond the idea, I mean, the reason I wanted to start my own business is really going back to the fact that I'm a mom. I think once I had my two girls, um, I was working so much and just thinking if I'm going to be dedicating this time away from my family and, and doing something else, which I, I'd love to do, why not do something for myself and why not build something for myself and make myself proud, make them proud um, and, and do that. And so that was, um, you know, I, I don't know that I it's a great piece of advice to recommend new parents to start businesses. But, I mean, <laughs> well, it's not for the it faint was, of heart, right? It's not for the faint of heart, but, <laughs> but it was my motivation. And uh, here we are today. Well, you know what I love is that you're, you're kind of answering a problem that I'm sure you're finding a solution to a problem that I'm sure a lot of us have, right? You come mm -hmm. home from a long day at the office or, or, you know, at work in general, and you just might like to kick back and relax. And for most of us, you know, one single glass of wine is a really wonderful way to unwind, maybe if it is only once a week. But you're absolutely right. Like, where do we go to find that? Because I'm certainly not a wine connoisseur, mm -hmm. but I appreciate the the R and R or even the socialization that goes along with getting together with a friend, right? Right, and right. You don't want to polish off the bottle. You just each want to have a glass. So yeah. I think it's brilliant, actually. I think your your business idea is wonderful. Now, why organic? Is there is there a certain uh, reason why organic wines was the thing that you wanted to try to target? Yes, a big part of our business, um, especially considering the packaging format, is sustainability. Um, it's also something that's really important to me, um, an area that I think the wine industry in general is behind other businesses or other industries. Um, you know, cans are a much more sustainable package than bottles. Their aluminum is recycled at twice the rate of glass. Um, you know, aluminum itself is usually a, a fully recycled like closed loop recycling process. So aluminum constantly gets made into new packages. And so 
Um, not to mention the fact that it's lighter to ship. It's not fragile. It doesn't take as much packaging. So just materials wise, a much sure. lower footprint. And um, this isn't answering your question about organic yet, but I'll get there. Um, so, you know, knowing that the package itself was sustainable and that we were really going to promote that message, it was important to me that the wine in the package was also sustainable. I felt like that would not be genuine if we're promoting sustainability from a packaging standpoint and not promoting sustainability from a agricultural standpoint. Right. Um, it, and honestly, I mean, you know, I think there's debates about whether it affects the taste of the wine. I find um, that winemaking is more intentional when it's organic grapes and I do find the wine to be better, but um, it, it's, it, it's really that, that how do we make sure that we're sustainable from the grape to the glass? Uh, and you know, the other it. really wonderful thing is I think about the socialization, you know, if you're having a pool party, it's certainly much safer to have wine in a can than wine yes. in a glass. I yes. mean, how yes. many times have we been somewhere at a social function where, you know, a glass of wine is sort of the de rigor right. and yet, you know, someone drops something and you're like, oh, geez, Louise, now how do we deal with that? We've got broken glass everywhere. Right. right. Not right. to mention that they can no longer enjoy their, their uh, beverage of choice. But right. <laughs> I, I also think that just from the the safety factor it just makes more sense to me especially mm -hmm. in the socialization of, of us as humans right. and the chance of wanting to get together and sort of you know share a glass of wine it just makes more sense to have it in a can especially if you're going to be at a social function so mm -hmm. kudos to you for Thank you. you know taking the leap of faith to say you know i i i see a, a market niche that's not being filled and i'm going to take the leap of faith to do it so when did you actually go to market Good question. So we launched the business. We first started selling wine in May of 2021. So at the height of the pandemic. <laughs> which was probably um, a good time to, which, start. <laughs> good time to start. Especially considering we started as an e-commerce business only. So we were doing direct shipping, which made sense because at the time, you know, people weren't going into stores. They certainly weren't going into bars and restaurants. Um, and there was a big bump in people just buying their alcohol directly, buying their wine directly and having it shipped to them. And so, right. um, it, it, it made sense for our business model at the time. Uh, but now we've expanded. We're now at retail as well. We still have our direct consumer shipping, which is an important part of our business. But most of our sales come from, you know, now brick and mortar retail stores. Well, which is kind of nice because now you're supporting the folks who may be looking for something new, right? Right, I mean, right. I always say if, if we're looking for something, then the general population is looking for it too. Right. Um, and to be able to find it easily and accessible in terms of convenience is is part of the bargain, right? Yes, I mean, it's all yeah. part of making your business uh, successful. So you mentioned that you're the mom of two small young ladies. Now, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, what have you found is your biggest challenge? Because I'm sure, are they the same challenges you had as an enterprise leader? Or are they similar or the same now that you are running your own business? That's a good question. I mean, I I went into this thinking that because it is my business and I'm the boss that I have all this make, time. I have all, not not necessarily all this time, but that I could have more control over my schedule. Um, right. And I do think that is largely the case. If my child has a school performance at 11 a.m. I have no problem going. I don't have to answer to anybody. I, I feel great that I can be there as her mom and, and support her. Um, you know, I would say the learning and the challenge is at the same time, it, there's nobody to take over for me when I don't want to work or when I do have family time. It's very hard to turn that off um, knowing that there's always something that could be done sure. for the business. Um, sure. You know, and I, I, I do obviously do my best to uh, prioritize my family uh, and the business. But, you know, it when you have some downtime on the weekend, should I be working, you know, or the right. kids are off on a play date, what can I do for a sip wall? And so um, it is a little bit of a balance. It's on some ways, it's more work life balance because of that freedom over the schedule. But in some ways, it's less because, you know, and I, I could turn it off or could not turn it off. Sure, um, sure. Well, it's nice you know. to have choices, right? Right. And nice exactly. to have the freedom of choice, which yeah. is really a, a wonderful thing to be able to dovetail into the sort of the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Now, you mentioned that you went to market during a time where you had only an online business, and now you've gone into bricks and mortar for to expand your product offering. 
give our viewing and listening audience a bit of an insight into how the marketing plan works for that. Because mm -hmm. of course, you know, in today's day and age, we're all being bombarded with these messages on social. Um, you know, we all know that social media is a great way to get started and to get your story out there because generally speaking, it's a low cost or no cost option. Mm -hmm. But give us a little bit of insight into what, if, what you have done to market your product. Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I would say we have kind of a two pronged approach to our marketing, I, I think, but all of it is under the umbrella of community building. So um, when we talk about digital media, social media is very important to us, but it is that aspect of building a community, educating people about wine, answering questions about wine, connecting brands that we admire with other brands. Um, you know, we're not trying to just have a one way conversation where we're pushing promotions out. We are trying to foster a community of like minded, honestly, mostly women. So hardworking women, successful women. How can we celebrate them and lift them up with our messaging um, online? Um, the second part of it is, and this goes back to what you were saying, is that wine is inherently a social beverage. Um, people do typically discover it in person or at the last minute. And so um, a large part of our marketing is building community in real life, in person to person. Sure. Uh, we do a lot of sampling. We do a lot of events. Um, we do a lot of community organized, um, you know, nonprofit uh, donations and, and things like that, um, really to try and get our story out, get the liquid out, get people trying the wine and, and liking the wine and buying the wine. And so, um, you know, that sort of in-person community building, it, as you know, we got through the pandemic is something that really helped propel our business forward, sure. um, especially as we went into retail and just grew our, you know, our brand presence in our, our home market in Southern California. So uh, to give me a little bit of an insight into something you've mentioned community and building a community and obviously engaging your customer to give you some feedback. So has your the the actual packaging or the product that you're uh, providing in the cans has that changed at all based on the consumer engagement that you've had? Um, no. I mean, I, I think over the past you, you hit know, it right off the mark. Yes, Good for you. Yeah. Well, no. I mean, we've obviously <laughs> changed the product. I mean, the wine changes vintage to vintage sure. anyway. So our product does have some variation, and we've done small things to to improve it in in the winemaking um, sense. Um, but that's more for my desire to have the best sure. quality wine. Um, sure. We've definitely taken consumer feedback. I think what has changed the most is finding the messages that resonate with people most. So the wine is mostly the same, our quality standards. The packaging is mostly the same because we feel very strongly about our brand positioning. But the ways that we talk about the wine, the ways that we show it, the the occasions that people are enjoying it, that is the feedback we're getting. Um, it, it's funny, you would think of a product like ours as being mostly for portability and on the go. Um, but we find for most people, they do just like drinking it at home. They like the portion it's control. The and so it's yeah. the convenience and portion control. Yeah. So it's, you know, maybe we're doing less picnic photo shoots and more at home on your couch type of thing. Sure. And those are the types of learnings that we're getting from people is just how are in they your actually... fluffy slippers, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Pictures in your fluffy slippers. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, give me a little bit of background into the, um, and certainly in a, in a short condensed version about how you connect with the actual winemakers, because I, I get the sense that you're not actually um, you know, growing the wine and pressing the wine and doing all of that sort of thing. So you have to have some sort of real strategic relationships with some of the folks who are winemakers. Yeah, that's a good question. We do do actually produce um, a good amount of our wine where we are um, purchasing grapes and blending it and, and doing that sort of thing. Um, but we do rely on really, I mean, what, you're right in that we're a virtual winery. We don't have an estate vineyard. We don't have a winery facility. Um, we're relying on relationships uh, to even just do the production of sure. our wine. Um, and we have a winemaker on our team who directs all of that. Um, she's great female winemaker. Um, and really, she's the one connecting a lot of the dots That's of right. this person has this thing. Look at these grapes. Go look here for this. And so um, 
a lot of that is relationship building and a lot sure. of that is the probably the least familiar you know the why making itself is what i'm least familiar with and has been the sure. biggest learning curve but it's yeah it's exciting a ton of fun. Though. It is yeah. very exciting. It's yeah. great to go. We uh, we produce all our wine in Paso Robles, which is in Central California, and so it's great to go up there. Great wine producing region, great wine industry community, and they've been incredibly forthright with sharing knowledge and sharing connections, and it's it's really been great. Oh, that's fantastic! Now I know um, when I was taking a look at your website that you are a mentor. You help to mentor other. Uh, entrepreneurs going through the, you know, making that, taking that leap of faith. So tell me a little bit about the mentor mentee relationship, because you must have had someone along the way who gave you the confidence or the little bit, a little boost to say, you know what, you have to try this, Hillary, you know, you've got this great idea, you need to take it to market. So is there a, a, a mentor mentee sort of relationship where it's symbiotic? Because, you know, as you've mentioned, you're learning things about winemaking. I would assume you've got the marketing down pat, you know how to do mm -hmm. that part. Yeah. Um, so is there someone in the that you can reference in the mentor mentee, where you know, your the relationship is symbiotic, and you're learning just as much from them as they are from you? You know, it, it's where I find that most, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to name one person because there sure. are so many. Sure. I think it takes where, a village, right? It takes a village. I, I'm yeah. finding that most in different communities of other founders. So obviously, you know, I've had mentors in this industry. I've had people on the wine side of the business for a while. I have advisors currently who are advising our business and are great. But I think when you're talking about that symbiotic relationship or providing value both ways, becoming a founder and becoming an entrepreneur and meeting other entrepreneurs in my industry and outside my industry, that has been the biggest support system, honestly, because I think sure. it's all of these other people who are in the trenches like I am, and we have the same problems, and we know the things that we want to hear for encouragement, and we know the things, you know, we, we know how to vent with each other. And so um, I've been fortunate to be part of a few different communities where um, I've had that ability to kind of help out other founders and and ask them questions. Um, one I'm particularly proud of is I'm a, currently a Tory Burch fellow. So Tori Burch, um, the fashion designer, has a foundation mm -hmm. where she supports female entrepreneurs. And every year she does a cohort of 50 women entrepreneurs across a variety of industries. And um, I'm currently going through that program and it has just been an incredibly a valuable resource from mm -hmm. an education standpoint, but just from a community standpoint to have mm -hmm all those women to talk to. Well, I love the fact that you're not only building community in your business, but you're participating in community as an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. kudos to you for taking that leap because, you know, sometimes we're heads down, nose to the grindstone and we right. forget to pick, right? We forget to look up and realize that there's somebody out there who can help. So yeah. kudos to you for looking out and finding ways in which um, there, there are support mechanisms out there in the industry. Now, how did you hear about the Enthuse Foundation? Oh, that's a good question. I, you know, I, I'm one of those probably rare, maybe not so rare, rare people who applied previously and got rejected and decided to come back and, and try again. And so um, I, I think it was one of those things really when I was first starting the business where I was just looking at every possible resource and it came up and, um, you know, I threw my hat in the ring and I, I didn't get it. But the feedback they, they gave was, you know, you have a great business, you're welcome to try again. And so um, we've had some great traction and growth over the past year, and I felt like it was the right time. Right to time. It's all about timing, and, right? It is all about timing. It's, it's all, all about, about timing. timing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I love the fact that you know you've referenced that you tried, you weren't successful, but that didn't discourage you from reaching out again and saying, you know, maybe the situation is a little bit different now. I've learned a little more. You know, we've grown. We're a little more stable. Our foundation is is uh, a little more solid. So why not? You know, mm -hmm. nothing ventured, nothing gained. Right. 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 Exactly. Now, if you had to share three words of advice for our viewing and listening audience who may be thinking about starting a business or taking their company to the next level, what would they be? Oh, man. Well, I was going to say one thing, but I think that last topic uh, kind of distilled something in my head. I, what I would say is resilience, resilience, resilience. Mm. I think um, the thing about starting your own business is it, it, there's never a dull moment, but and it's full of ups and downs. and some days may be more downs than ups. Some weeks may be more downs than ups. But um, 
I think if you believe in what you're doing and you have a passion for it and you're working hard at it, that the best thing you can do is be resilient because it, I mean, and, and I'm guilty of this too. I need to remind myself all the time because it's very easy to get discouraged, mm -hmm. question why you're doing this. Am I doing the right thing? Mm -hmm. um, without having that team or that community, if you are just head down doing the work. And so um, that's what I, like I would say. Words. Yes. I like the Just words. repeat yeah. it three times. That's yeah, I need. like it. It's just I three like doses it. of resilience. So. Good for you. Yeah. Now, how does our viewing and listening audience connect with you and your team in order to either get the educational component that you're providing in terms of, you know, educating us on what the best ways to enjoy um, or uh, how do they connect with you online to buy? Yes, good question. So uh, you can find us at www.sipwell.co. Uh, that's our website. You can buy directly from us. We ship pretty much nationwide. Um, we are also very active on Instagram at sipwell.co. Uh, and if anyone wants to reach out to me directly to share ideas or ask questions, I'm uh, my email is hillary, H-I-L-A-R-Y, at sipwell.co as well. Well, you know, Hillary, I want to congratulate you and your team for doing all of the work that you've done. Um, I love the word of resilience and being able to come back and revisit things. And I would venture to guess those two young ladies are pretty lucky to have a mom like you because you're giving them a really wonderful foundation for all of the things that we are trying to achieve really by being entrepreneurs. So congratulations to you. And I'm sure that there'll be some really wonderful things happening with your business um, as a result of participating in the pitch competition. Well, thank you so much uh, for your kind words and for the opportunity to share my story here. My absolute pleasure. To you, our viewing and listening audience, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this special edition of Keeping It Real with a behind the scenes look into business ownership and breaking barriers to success. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series, and I'd like to extend a special thanks to the team at the Enthuse Foundation for all the work that they do to support business innovation and the journey to success. You may visit them on their website and their contact information will also be found in the description portion below. And I'd like to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Business Mentorship Keeping It Real, and visit our website, shareyourstories.online where we feature business stories from international entrepreneurs and enterprise leaders while celebrating their great ideas. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time for another edition of Keeping It Real.